Paradigm Shift, A Closer Examination In the 1998 movie, The Truman Show, Jim Carrey's character Truman Burbank is an unwitting participant in an ongoing reality television show that is watched by audiences around the world. Truman's entire world that he lives in, is an artificial construct within a giant archaeological dome in Hollywood. Around the town are thousands of cameras watching his every move. All the events that Truman experiences take place within a closely controlled environment. This is overseen by the show's executive producer, Kristoff, played by Ed Harris. At one point, Truman begins to notice unusual occurrences. These slowly challenge his reality and cause him to question whether everything in his life is actually real. As his reality starts to unravel, he eventually attempts to sail away. However, he collides with the wall of the dome and punctures it. When he finds an exit, Kristoff tries to discourage Truman from leaving, telling him that there is no more truth in the real world, and that Truman would be better off in the artificial one where he would have nothing to fear. However, now that his eyes are open, this changes his worldview of his own reality forever. Truman decides to leave as he can no longer stay where he was all these years. The Truman Show presents a powerful image of how our worldview can suddenly change. As a result, we can no longer go back to the way we were before. Most of us aren't conscious of our worldview. We do not learn it so much as absorb it from our surrounding culture. We assume that the way we understand life is how everyone else does, and that our own understanding of the world is reality. In his book The Universe Next Door, James Sire defines a worldview as a set of presuppositions, or assumptions, that we hold, consciously or unconsciously, about the basic makeup of our world. We acquire many of our thinking patterns through which we evaluate and interpret our experiences from our parents, the media, art, education, to name but a few sources. Our worldview acts like a lens. It colors, clarifies or warps our perception of the world around us. These thinking patterns are also known as paradigms. The word paradigm was originally a scientific term and was introduced by Thomas Kuhn in his book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. Kuhn argues how almost every significant breakthrough in the field of scientific endeavor was a break with old ways of thinking or paradigms. Today, the word more commonly refers to a model, theory, assumption or frame of reference. In its more general sense, it refers to the way we see the world. This is not so much in terms of our visual sense of sight. It's more in terms of the way we perceive, understand or interpret things. A simple way to understand paradigms is to see them as maps. We know that the map is not the territory itself. Instead, it is an explanation of certain aspects of the territory. This is essentially what a paradigm is, a theory, explanation or model of something else. Each of us tend to think that we see things as they are, that we are objective. As Kristoff says in The Truman Show, we accept the reality with which we are presented. That, is not exactly true for the rest of us mere mortals. We see the world, not as it is, but as we are, or as we are conditioned to see it. When we open our mouths to describe what we see, we're actually describing things with reference to our own perceptions or paradigms. The more we're aware of our paradigms or assumptions, and how our experience influences it, the more we can examine these paradigms. We can test them against reality and truth and listen to others. This allows us to be open to their perceptions, and obtain a large piece of the picture and a more objective view. In order to do this, we need to undergo a paradigm, or perception, shift. In other words, we need a change of our worldview in order to see things different, much like how Truman underwent one himself. Think back to how you thought before you became embraced your faith. Your view of the world and of everything that happened was completely different to the way you might think of things now. This might be different for each of you depending on your own experience. If you only embraced that belief system earlier, then you'll be more aware of this. However, if you were in that faith from a young age, then you might find it hard to remember a time you ever thought differently. For example, if you went from an atheist to a Christian, this would have involved a complete shift in the way you viewed and interpreted the world. Many non-Christians often regard biblical truths as illogical or contrary to one's general worldview. By nature, we cannot accept certain biblical truths, for it doesn't fit with what we usually consider to be rational, logical or true. 1 Corinthians 1 18-216 demonstrates this so-called illogic or foolishness of God. In 1 18, Paul writes, 
For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. And in 2.14, he explains. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God but considers them foolishness, and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. However, to experience this new way of seeing, we need a complete change of our minds and the way we see things. Once we've experienced this switch, we can't go back to our previous way of thinking. Throughout the New Testament, Paul emphasizes the need for God to renew our minds. In Romans 12 2 he says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing and perfect will. He also adds in Ephesians 4 22-24. You were taught, with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Unfortunately, changing the attitude of our minds is not something that we can arrive at simply through logical reasoning or rational thought. When it comes to knowing Source, this change of mind is not something we can initiate ourselves. It involves Spirit pointing out the image to us. As Romans 8 6-7 says, The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to Source, it does not submit to law, nor can it do so. It is only through a renewing of our minds, through the practice of praying in the certain ways we encounter Spirit that we are able to come to know Source. Through Spirit, Source is revealed to us. In John 6:44, Jesus says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is only when we experience an unveiling or revelation from Spirit through personal encounter with Him that He is able to pull back the curtain that is clouding our minds. When that happens, our whole worldview changes and we can see Source as you were intended to see and experience that paradigm shift. Ankh, Yuja, Senem Life, Strength, Health, Learn, Like, and Subscribe. Copyright 2024 Kenneth Money All Rights Reserved. Mott's Feather of Truth is a registered trademark of Project Mott Publishing, Chicago, Illinois.